Today's message is titled, Our Rock Solid Savior. Amen. You know, we're continuing on our, our wholeness series, and today we're talking about stability. Y'all been enjoying the wholeness series? Amen. Like I said, the goal is at the end of this for you to have weapons of warfare. Amen. To have weapons to be able to apply to your life, to have tools and foundational principles that you can live out every single day so that you can walk in the fullness of life. Amen. And so today is stability. And obviously, you know, that comes from our, our vision scripture, Jeremiah 33 and 6. And so when you talk about stability, you know, we've been connecting every single, every single point with a book um, that my father wrote. And so today, the book we're looking at is Success Habits. Amen. And it's so important that, that we understand that what we do every single day determines the results that our life produces. You know, whatever you consistently do will produce something in your life. And so what we want to make sure that we're doing is the things that we are consistently doing to the days, the things that you have said, you know what, I'm going to apply this to my life every single day. We want to make sure those things are sourced from the word of God. Amen. How many of you guys know there's, there's so many things out there now, I tell them with, with Facebook and Instagram and, and, and Twitter and all that type of stuff, like a new philosopher is born every single day. Every single day there's a new person that all of a sudden has a, has a doctorate degree and can just say whatever, and then you're supposed to take that information and apply it to your life. Sometimes they get offended if you don't even, don't even agree, and it's like, no, that's, that's not exactly how this thing was set up to work. You know, I, I, before I take anything that you have to say and, and apply it to my life, I need to know that it's sourced from the word of God. Amen. You know, and that's just not colorful talk. There's, there's reason behind that. You know, and that's what we're going to talk about today. There's, there's reasons why we want the things that we do every single day to be sourced from the word of God, because the word of God is a solid rock. It is a sure foundation. I like to say it like this. Every time you, you receive a promise or a principle from the word of God by faith, you get pregnant with potential. Amen. Every single time, every single time that you receive a promise from the word of God, every time you read something and you apply it to your life, you get pregnant with potential. Now, the thing is, though, what you do every single day determines the health or the nature of what you birth. You know, once you get pregnant, that's an exciting part. You know, when like my wife got pregnant, we celebrated. She's pregnant. Yes. But how do you guys know from the moment she got pregnant, what she did and, you know, it was, it's teamwork. What we did. <laughs> what we did from that moment forward, the habits, not, not the thing we did one time, not the thing we did every blue moon, but the thing we did every single day determined the health of that pregnancy. And so when you hear the word of God and you receive it as yours by faith, you are pregnant. There is something God can birth out of what you're receiving by faith. Now, the habits that you prescribe to every single day that you live out, they determine the health of that pregnancy. They determine the health of what will be birthed. And so that's why it's so important that, man, the things that we do every single day, the things that we apply to ourselves, our lives every single day, we want to make sure that it's sourced somewhere from this book. Amen. Because if it's not sourced from this book, the foundation may be changeable. You know, one thing pastor used to say all the time, every time a man learns something new, he has the potential of changing his philosophy. You know, it, it could be a new experience. It could be something that he saw, but... He has the potential. How many of you guys know if, if you were to go back 50 years from where we are right now and say, hey, man, there's going to be a thing called the Internet, and there's going to be flat screen TVs, and there's going to be cars that go 220 miles an hour, you would have had a whole group of people that would say, never. That's never going to happen. That can't happen. We, that sounds great, but we don't know. But if you were to take all those men back then, and put them in today, and you show them all these things immediately, they would have to change their philosophies. They would have to immediately say, you know what? I was wrong. Man, there's flat screen TVs. There's cars that go 220 miles an hour. There's a thing called the internet. 
but they would have to change. Why? Because they learned something new. They were seeing something, they experienced something new. And so that's why we have to say, hey, okay, you know, that was, that was great information that you gave, or that sounded good, or, or that looked good, but what I need to know most importantly is, was that inspired by the word of God? Is what you're telling me to do, the thing you're saying, hey, I want you to do this every single day. I want you to do this every single week. I want you to do this every single month. You know, something that I'm applying to my life. Did you get that from the book? Or did you just think that up because it sounded good? How many of you guys know we have to know the difference? And not only do we have to know the difference, we have to live our lives based on the differences. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm going to live my life based on the things that come out of the book. Not because, you know, other things don't sound good or because other things don't seem good or not because people may have gotten great results from whatever it is they're applying. But what I know is the word of God is a sure rock. It's a sure foundation. It has backup power. It has God saying, hey, look, this ain't going to change on you. You can take what I'm saying today. It will be the same tomorrow. And guess what? It, you can wake up 20 years from now. It's going to say the same thing. Why? Because it's solid. And believers' lives, the life of a believer shouldn't reflect chaos. But we should reflect stability. What is our stability comes from? What makes us stable? What makes us stable is we live our lives based on what's written. It'll automatically make you stable. Why? Because it can't change. Oh, amen. And so I want to go here real quick because, you know, it's just a, a great example. Turn to 1 Samuel 17 because it's a great example of, of us kind of seeing it kind of play out in action. And, of course, this is the story of uh, David and Goliath. But we're just going to read this one part here because, you know, at this point, David had been out tending to the sheep. You know, out of all accounts, people say, what is David doing? David's tending the sheep. Well, the thing is, they had a Philistine problem. And so they needed, they needed you know, all the warriors, and all the people that had been trained up to this point, they ain't cutting the mustard when it comes to defeating this Philistine. But here comes David, and David's like, I can solve your problem. And so we're going to jump in right here, verse 1 Samuel 17, verse 32. And Master said, David, I'm reading the message version. He said, don't give up hope. I'm ready to go and fight this Philistine. Saul answered, David, you can't go and fight this Philistine. You're too young and inexperienced. And he's been at this fighting business since before you were born. And so, of course, David said, well, let me help you out, Saul, and let you know what I've been doing. I know it ain't been out here in front of all y'all, but there's some things I've been doing every single day that I think qualify me for what y'all have a problem with. And so then David said, I've been a shepherd, tending sheep for my father. Whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I'll go after it, knock it down and rescue the lamb. If it turned on me, I'd grab it by the throat, wring its neck, and kill it. And I said, man, look, he, he wasn't just playing around with the problem. He was destroying the problem. I said, it just kind of reminded me, you know, my father, he used to, you know, my mother hates snakes. And so, you know, a snake would come around the house, and, and he'll be like, you know, you got to do something about this snake, mom. You got to do something about the snake. He'll go, Brian, you know, we got a snake at the house, okay? And we will go out there and Honestly, we were equally as scared of the snake. And so we didn't go out there. We didn't go out there and try to kill the snake. We just kind of chased it away. You know, get on, get on up out of here. Don't come back now, you hear? Like you, <laughs> you know, we, we, y'all, y'all laughing at me. I, some of y'all done did the same thing. Y'all husbands done ran out the house. Y'all beating the shovel on the ground. Y'all doing everything, just making a bunch of noise, just trying to get it to run. But that wasn't David M.O. David went out there like, no, I'm, this bear is going to die today. My sheep are going to remain protected. I'm not going to just do the, the, the easy. I'm not just going to run them off, but I'm going to make sure that they're well kept. So he's out there killing lions and killing bears. And at this point, he's saying, hey, king, I wasn't just out there washing them sheep. I wasn't just out there just playing in the fields. I was doing a thorough job. 
And he came and David said, I've been a shepherd, tending sheep for my father. Whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I'll go after it, knock it down and rescue the lamb. If it turned on me, I'd grab it by the throat, wring its neck and kill it. Lion or bear, it made no, no difference. I killed it. And I'll do the same to this Philistine pig. He, he named name him an animal. <laughs> who is taunting the troops of God alive, God who delivered me from the teeth of the lion and the claws of the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. Saul said, go, God help you. (laughs) But what had happened? You know, David was given an assignment by his father. He was attending to it every single day. His habits, what he was doing every single day was preparing him to fight a victory that he, to fight a war that he hadn't even done yet. You know, when, when he came, he didn't say, well, you know, I've defeated plenty Goliaths and I've defeated plenty Philistines, so I think I'm qualified to get this guy. No, he actually said, the thing I've been doing every single day seems like it, it built me up to be able to face this big problem that you have. And that's the part where we have to say, hey, look, our lives, Our lives should be that same reflection. What we are doing every single day is important. The habits and how we do what we do every single day is important. It's important because it it may not look like the battle that you may be facing, but it's preparation for what you can face. And so it's important that the things that we prescribe to ourselves, the things that we say, hey, this is a part of my maintenance. This is a part of building me up. This is a part of strengthening who I am. We want those everyday habits, those everyday things that we commit to, to be founded in the word of God. Why? Because they could produce results beyond what we naturally could. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to turn to. 1 Samuel 2 and 2. I'm going to read this in the King James Version. Because what do we know? Consistency is the key to what? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. It's what you're doing every single day. You know, we're, we want to establish principles to live by every single day based on God's unchangeable nature. You know, I want, I want what I do. I want what, what I'm adding to my life. How many of you guys know that every single day you have the ability to add a new habit to your life? You have the ability to make a new choice in your routine. You have the, you, you, you can do it. But where you want to do it from or where you want to be inspired from or where you want to be sourced from is the word of God. Because that's our sure rock. That's our sure foundation. I remember, you know, uh, man, I guess it's been a while now, now that I think about it. But um, I used to train every day to play golf. I was trained to become a professional golfer. This is probably about, oh, my goodness. Ooh, Jesus. (laughs) Boy, time keeps on ticking and ticking. It's probably about 10 years ago. And, you know, the things that they would tell us to do to give you an idea, you know, when you're trained to become a professional golfer, while I was training, it was almost like a full-time job. You know, there was eight hours. I practiced eight hours a day golf, just practice. During that time, they would split up what I needed to do during that day to be able to produce the results that we wanted to accomplish, which was me becoming a professional golfer. The thing is, every year, I started to notice that they would prescribe something different based upon what new thing was discovered that might make you better. What am I saying? I'm saying, yeah, there there are many philosophies. There's many things out there that people prescribe to say, hey, this is going to get you to where you're looking to go next. This is going to build you up. And you carve time out of your day to attend to those things. But when it comes to shaping you as a person, when it comes to shaping your character, when it comes to shaping your vision, when it comes to shaping your destiny, those are things that need to be sourced from the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's not up for popular opinion. Shouldn't be up for popular opinion. 
Definitely shouldn't be the thing that most people feel is the best thing to do. But it should be the thing that God has inspired you to do based from his word of God. Amen. In 2 Samuel 2 and 2, we read here, it says, There is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one besides you, your, you, nor is there any rock like our God. And that's there just to remind us that, hey, there is, there is nobody like our God. There is, there is no better foundation. There is no better person that you could connect with to build your life upon. So let's go to 2 Samuel 22 and 32. And I'm just going to go through some scriptures here just to, just to build up that foundation. Amen. Because what we what we kind of been conditioned and, and, and this is the point of today to say, no, we're going to recondition how we build and how we develop ourselves and, and how we apply things to our life every day. You know, we've, we've kind of been conditioned to kind of say, well, you know, if it feels good, it sounds good, it looks good, it got to be good. The, the problem with that is, and you know, we're, we're equally a part of that in, in some ways. This is a good part of it, there's a bad part of it, but you guys know it. Someone can have a, a, oh, I don't want to call them out. But me and my wife, we kind of laugh because there's a certain restaurant, right? They have the best. I'm going to let y'all figure it out for yourself, but I ain't going to call them out. They have the best seafood commercials you ever want to see. The way the lobster just slides across the plate, the lemon zest is just floating. I mean, it's like this thing is like perfectly seasoned and put together. And the, the, the fact of the matter is, I tell my wife, we at least twice a year, we got to go just because the commercials are good. <laughs> like, you know, this thing, it, can't, it cannot be, you know, what we experience every time. Every time I show up, though, the lobster ain't exactly floated on the play table the right way. The shrimp scampi don't look like the shrimp scampi in the commercial. But I go just because, man, that thing looks so good in that commercial. That at least, like I say, twice a year, we just go by there just to check and see. Well, maybe this year they're going to pull it off, you know. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying, man, you know, marketing and advertising and all those things have become such powerful tools, but they don't necessarily identify good product. They, they most of the time identify a great budget. You know, they like, hey, look, you know, I got this all right product. It's all right, and I know it's all right, but I need y'all to make this thing look good. And so they go, you know, they spend all the necessary money to make it appeal or look great or look like it could be the thing that could just change your life or be the thing that you have been desiring or wanting. But the thing that happens to most of us is the Bible keeps staying black and white. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing colorful about the scriptures. There's nothing presented in it in a way that makes you say, hey, come and get me. Normally, it's the book in your house that's been kind of sitting there. You know, it's not bright orange or bright green. Most of y'all Bibles are black or brown. Most of the insides of them, the only color you have is red from the words of Jesus. But our eyes have been conditioned to say, man, if it, if it looks good, it must be good. And the problem is it's just not true. The problem is something can look as beautiful as they designed it to look, but have no benefit for your life. And we have to learn, we have to recondition ourselves to say, you know what? That book is the source. That book is the inspiration from which I apply things to my life. Oh, it may not be coming across in, 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 in 4K vision. It may not be coming across, what's that new thing, the OELED or something like that. They got a TV, it's got O, it's OLED. I done said it wrong. It's supposed to be the new version of plasma. Man, you can put, you can put anything on that TV and it looks good. <laughs> But we have to understand that, man, the word of God sometimes is the most simplest thing. 
Sometimes it's the most practical thing. In most cases, it's not the thing that's always yelling at you or screaming at you, but it is the most consistent thing. It is the most powerful thing. It is actually the thing that will change your life. Amen. Amen. And so let's read this. I'm going to read starting at verse 29, 2 Samuel 22, verse 29. It says, for thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. For who is God save the Lord and who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou have enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. And right there, we're just reading through the strength, the power that comes through God and his word of how it will, it will bring dark light to dark situations. It will, it will shape your hands, get you ready and prepared for war. It will do everything necessary to build you up to be everything God has designed for you to be. The word of God. You actually can use just this one book and be a successful person in life. Oh, wait, man. I know. Pastor Brian, it don't seem like we're going to be running around the room today. <laughs> You're not. But I guarantee you, this is if man, this is this is so life changing. If applied, if you just say, you know what, I'm going to live my life. Based on the word of God, I'm going to make a decision today that for now on. Anytime I apply something to my life that's supposed to better who I am, it has to come from this book. That decision alone, that one decision will change your life. Oh, amen. Let's go to Psalm 62 and 2. Because what are we talking about? We're talking about stability. What brings me stability? What, what makes my life reflect stability? What makes my life reflect strength? What makes my life reflect everything that I hear about and read about in the word of God? The word of God. Applying it, doing it, being consistent with it every single day. Y'all are ready? It says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. My defense and my fortress, I shall not be greatly moved. And understanding that, man, when you, when you pick that up, when you say, hey, this is, this is the foundation from which I'm going to do everything that I do. I'm going to live and, 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 and breathe every single day. Man, it becomes your defense. It becomes your fortress. It becomes a place which you can stand knowing that you are protected. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and 4. You guys ready? It says, trust in the Lord forever, for in God, the Lord, we have an everlasting rock. Why are we reading this? Because many things that people will tell you, like I told you about the guys with the great golf advice, it had an expiration date on it. I didn't even know. Y'all telling me to do things every single day that you know is only going to last for so long. You know that, hey, man, if you don't if you don't get this done in the next 30 days, then all the things that I have told you, all the advice I have given you, you can go ahead and forget about it because it ain't no good no more. 
It may look flashy, it may look great, it may present, be presented wonderful, but all of your information had an expiration on it. Like you gave me inspiration like, like milk. It was good and satisfying when it went down, but how long does milk last? Two weeks? A week. My wife told me a week. I don't know. What I know is it don't last a month. <laughs> if you got milk for a month, get rid of it. It's no good. It just don't last that long. But the word of God is everlasting. God will never come back and say, oh, no, you know that thing that you read out of the book that you applied to your life? Don't do that no more. It expired. The, the power behind it, the, the, the wisdom behind it, the, the thing that it could produce, it no longer produces no more because that actually expired. No, the word of God won't expire on you. It won't run out. It won't run dry. It won't quit. It won't give up. If you just take one thing out of the book and say, hey, I'm going to apply this to my life every single day, you are good to go knowing that it won't change on you. It won't run out and it won't run dry. But the power that existed from the moment that you read it and the moment that you receive it, receive it will last as long and as forever as it needs to. Oh, Amen. Boy, that's good news. That's good news, man. Boy, I've been, oof. I didn't even know. Any of y'all ever been told some, something or given some advice that you didn't even know was expiring advice until you called back to use it? Like, hey, man, you told me it was 30% off this week. You called back, they'd be like, no, nah, that, that expired yesterday. You know that feeling? When you was one day late for the sale, <laughs> God said you can avoid all of that in your life. I don't have expiration dates. Amen. Amen. Man, and why is this so awesome? Why is this so, so powerful for us? Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I'm reading the Amplified Version. You guys ready? And it says, no temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience. Nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. But what does it say? But God is faithful to what? To his word, to his compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist but along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will always provide the way out so that you will be able to endure, endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy. And that's what God's saying. Hey, look, walking and living a life with me based in my words will, will make sure that you're never in a position to where you're feeling like, hey, man, you know what? I can't find a way out. There is no way out. I'm trapped in. And I see this a lot of times. You know, I go talk to people. They may be going through something. And you're like, hey, man, well, what's, what's going on here? You know, you sound like you're being overwhelmed. And we find that the root of it is because at some point they've substituted or put in position some philosophy or some way of doing things that didn't come from the word of God. And it's like, no, you, you can't you can't start start this thing and say, hey, you know what, God, me and you were together. Start this thing inspired by God and start moving towards his direction and then start putting new and different pieces into the foundation. I said, you know, it's so interesting, but how many of you guys have ever built a house or seen a house being built? Anybody here? Let me ask you a question. Did they ask you or ever ask you what color did you want the foundation to be? <laughs> they didn't give you an option. They didn't say, hey, look, you know, we're about to pour the foundation this week. Would you like it to be blue? Would you like it to be green? Would you like it to be purple? What color do you want your foundation? They didn't even ask you how deep do you want it poured? Do you want a, you want a six inch foundation? You, would you like a 10-inch foundation when we pour this thing? No, they didn't give you any options when it came to pouring the foundation for your house. Why? Because this is being poured so that everything that stands upon it can last. Yes. 
This ain't being poor to your favorite features or your favorite likings. This isn't being issued according to your preferences. This is being issued so that you have a solid rock to stand upon. And that's why God said, hey, no, this is my word. Yeah, it's not changing. No, it's not adjustable. No, it's not movable. But understand, it's because it's a perfect foundation. Oh, amen. It's a foundation that can be trusted. It's a foundation. A lot of people want to negotiate with the word of God. That's like negotiating the, 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 the tires on your car. Like, I don't feel like my car should come with tires. They're like, it's the only way it can move. <laughs> when you go buy a car, the only option you have a tire is black, black, or black. <laughs> you maybe can put some white walls on it, you know, to get a little flavorful. But there's some pieces of it. They don't... <laughs> They don't allow you to just get up there and say, you know, I just would like a different tread pattern in my tiger. They're like, no, this is foundational. The word of God is foundational. That's why it's so important that we say, hey, man, this is this is this is not a thing I'm taking opinions on. This is not actually a thing that is open for discussion. This is actually something that I'm not changing. I'm not moving because I'm going to live by this. And I want everything that I do after this to be built on this and nothing else. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 7 and 24. Some of y'all are like, man, Pastor Brian got all the scriptures today. He ain't read these many scriptures in a month. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. All right. Stay with me. Boy, this is so good. Man. And of course, we, we're, we're, we're jumping in here and we're jumping in after um, Jesus goes over several lessons and, and he's saying several ways of how people should live. And of course, he gets to the end of it right here. I'll read it in the um, King James Version. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And let's go look at this in the Message Bible. Man, it's so powerful. Matthew 7 and 24 in the Message Bible. You guys ready? They put up on the screen. Oh, that's awesome. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner, homeowner improvements to, to your standard of living, they are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you, if you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. Oh, amen. And that's Jesus just clarifying, hey, look, you know, the things that I'm saying, the things that I'm teaching aren't additions. They're not things to come along with. They're not things to put on top of. Man, the things that I'm telling you are foundational things. They are things to establish your way of living by not things to add to what you already are doing. Oh, man. Okay. What are you saying? I'm saying that, you know, many of us, we're in the process of, and we always are in the process of renewing ourselves. As we hear the word of God and the word of God comes first, we're in the process of renewing. But in that process of renewing, what Jesus is saying here, when you get instructions from me, when, when you get directions from my word, you don't combine that with what you came with. You replace that and say, no, this is now my foundation. Amen. And that's what he means by saying, no, they're not additions. I'm not curtains. This ain't window treatment. These ain't the couches. This, this ain't, the, this ain't the, the garage door. These are none of these things, but these things are the things that your house stands on. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 40 and 2. Amen. 
And it reads, he brought me up out of the pit of destruction and out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And what's that speaking towards? It's speaking to the power of God's word, the power of his ability, the power of his might when applied to your life. He's saying, look, it doesn't matter where you where you were or what what place you were in. It has the ability to raise you up. But when it brings you out, it's not just going to put you down in a place that's unstable and in a place that you could be wavery about. But once you apply this to your life and it brings you out, you're out for good. You know, it's not temporary relief. How many of you guys ever know you got, you got the, that medicine, that 12-hour pill, that 24-hour pill? The Word of God is not a 12-hour pill or a 24-hour pill. It's not something that, you know, you're like, hey, look, the Word of God brought me out this situation, but I better wash my back because pain coming in 12 hours. <laughs> no, the Word of God, man, when you apply it to your life and you use it, as the tool that brings you out of whatever trouble you may be facing, it brings you out and it sets you down stable. Amen. Amen. You know, it doesn't have them long discharge papers, man. Boy, there's more fear in the discharge papers than the stuff that they say sometimes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You go to the doctor and they'd be like, okay, you know, you're good to go. But before you leave, we got some instructions to take home with you. What is all this on this paper? I thought y'all was supposed to fix this. Y'all sent me home wondering if I got 13 other things. (laughs) But the word of God doesn't do that. The word of God, man, it'll get you, fix you up, set you up, and sit you down on stable ground. Amen. Amen. Our pastor says I got 5%. We're going to do this, Jesus. (laughs) Let's go to... uh, Oh, man, yeah, that's good, too. Let's go to Proverbs 10 and 25. Right here, this is, this is Solomon writing. He's saying, when the, world, when the whirlwind passes... The wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. You know, when all the dust settles, when when all the things that society presents as problems or when all the things that the world is presented as as troubles that we should be worried about, things that are going to destroy, things that 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 we are believing for. We got to understand that everything that's established in, in God has an everlasting foundation. It's connected to a source that will make sure that after the winds, the storms, the rain, and anything that can come to try to harm what God is establishing with you. It's like, no, this, this, this thing is solid. You're solid. Everything that you do based on the word of God, everything that you become, everything you're inspired to do based on God's words to you is solid. You can take it to the bank. You don't have to be concerned about does it and can it uh, stand the test of time. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Of course, this is Paul speaking to the church of Corinth. And he says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. And man, that's just so comforting and so powerful. Because like I say, you can, you can pick up some foundations, you can pick up some habits, you can pick up some things, and just to find out that 10 months later that, man, actually, that, that's not going to produce the results we thought it was going to produce. What we thought that was going to do for you, it, it ain't going to do it. Uh, but we got something else that can actually do it. But the word of God doesn't treat you like that. The word of God doesn't act like that. Everything you do and everything that you put a part of your life, every habit you develop as a result of something you read from the word of God or something God has spoken to you, you will not be toiling or laboring or working in vain. Every single thing that you do will produce fruit. Amen. And that's what we were talking about. We read about David and Goliath. Yeah, it may have seemed as though he was just out there with some sheep 
you know, I mean, beating up lions and bears is pretty big, but it may seem like he was just out there alone, not doing anything important to saving their kingdom, not doing anything important to save their city. But as it turns out, the thing that he was doing every single day, the thing that he was out there committed to himself, the thing that he was doing in obedience actually is the thing that qualified him to be able in a time when no one else could do something about the problem that was coming. David was able to stand strong. Why? Because his labor, his toiling, his working, it was not in vain. Your labor, your toiling, everything that you're doing in God, every time you read, every time you pray, every time that you say, you know what, God, I'm going to do something about what I've learned, something that I've been taught, something that you're showing me, everything that you do, it will not be labor that's done in vain. And that's one of the biggest things, you know, everybody, everybody wants to know that the things that they're doing today are going to make a difference. The things that they're doing tomorrow are going to make a difference. Preferably, when I'm gone, the things that I did are going to speak and make a difference. Well, how do I make sure, how do I know that the thing that I'm doing right now is something that's going to have that type of everlasting impact? Man, just get it from the Word. Be inspired by the book. Read about the great men, the great women. See the things that they did, and God will start to show you who you are. He'll start to birth through you your destiny that will have everlasting impact. How many of you guys know you can go on Google, Yahoo, or Bing, and you can say, you know what, I just want to know what are things that I can do that will have everlasting impact. And the Internet will tell you some stuff. It will. If you just Google what are things I can do that my life makes a difference, the Internet will tell you all types of stuff. But the Internet ain't guaranteed. God is guaranteed. His word is guaranteed. And as you read it, as you as you make it a part of your life, as you make it a habit, it will inspire you to do things that will make sure that the things that your hands are attending to will last forever. Amen. Amen. Boy, that's good news. Oh, man, I didn't even know it. And we, 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 we at the end. <laughs> but, man, I want you to turn to Isaiah 55 and 11. I'm going to read this. You guys can flip there. They can put it on the screens. Put Psalms 20 and 7 up on the screens. But it reads, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord of God. And what is he saying there? He's saying, look, there's, there's people that will put their their name or put their value or say, man, it was great because of this thing you may see or that thing you may see. But for us as believers, as us as Christians, we never let that outboast who God is to us. Understanding that anything we do for him has so much more great of a reward, has so much more great of an impact, so much more great of an everlasting quality to it than any of the things that can be material possessions to say, hey, man, you know what? He lived a great life. How do you know? You see all those cars? How many of you guys know that will fade away in time? Amen. But we boast in the Lord. We boast in things that he has shown us to do, things that he has directed us to do. The greatest part of your day should be when you talk about what God has shown you, what God is telling you. What, God, what you're believing God for, what God's going to do with your life, what God has designed just for you. Oh, amen. So you guys there at Isaiah 55 and 11. Oh, this one's so beautiful. Amen. Y'all know the word of God. Y'all probably looking at me. He just called the word of God beautiful. You got to understand how it talks to me. Like, like it, it, it's, it's, oh, man. Oh, man. 
many people understand, and, and, and that's the goal of today for all to understand, that, man, when you set this as your foundation, man, you only could find yourself off but so much. And then the word of God does just that, man. It becomes like a sweet savior. It just becomes so good. It's like comfort food. You know, I love some comfort food. <laughs> you know, something that just make you want to lay down and just, just rest. <laughs> you know, I, Lord, my wife looked at me funny yesterday. I went into, um, we went to this restaurant Man, I, it was lunchtime. I ordered me some shepherd's pie. Ooh, that's some good comfort food. I'm trying to tell you, I was sitting there. It just was, it was freedom raising this place. It was, I was singing worship songs to myself, <laughs> eating mashed potatoes. And y'all know what shepherd's pie is? Some of y'all don't know. I, I pray that God leads you to some good shepherd's pie. <laughs> As you, as you leave today, he will direct you. Oh, man, it's like a little dish, and they got, like, like you know, beef and, and vegetables and all that stuff at the bottom, and they just take mashed potatoes, put it on top, and just put a layer of, like, cheese on that. They just bake it all together. It comes out as one dish, you know what I'm saying? It's not one of them separate dish situations. It's like one spoon gets all type of meal. It's a <laughs> That's how I feel reading the Bible. <laughs> if you want a visualization of how sweet and how awesome the word can become to you when it's just real for you. Man, it's just like that. You just feeling uneasy, you're feeling unstable and it's the word of God just comes in and says, "No, you I'm your solid rock." Man, just, 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 just eat a little bit. Eat a little bit and see what it does for you. Understanding that, man, it ain't going no way. This, this meal ain't going to run out. This meal ain't going to run dry. This meal is backed by God himself. This, this, oof. Boy, I got to read the scripture. Isaiah 55 and 11. And it says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Amen. And that's why, man, that's, that's, that's why we make sure we, we intentionally investigate. Pastor, you're just always talking about in relationship, investigate before you invest, right? Well, man, you should do the same things with things that are becoming habits, things that you were prescribing to your life. Investigate before you invest your life and time into it. Make sure that this thing is backed by the word of God, because everything backed by God is a sure foundation. It has his power supply connected. And that's what Isaiah is letting us know, that it cannot return void. Oh, amen. It will do everything it was sent to do. Amen. You guys can stand to your feet. And so, you know, amen. <laughs> you know, some of you guys are saying, man, man, Pastor Brian, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to get some word based principles and habits a part of my life. You know, you may have been in a spot to where you're like, man, I just, I was doing what the most famous person doing what I'm doing said to do. They said this worked out good for them. So I, I just took it and owned it as mine. You know, I didn't really investigate whether or not God had prescribed it to me. I did not see whether or not it was something that was written in the book concerning believers. And it's backed by God's power. I didn't do all of that. Well, that's why, you know, Pastor wrote this book, and it's, it is so amazing. Um, Alice can tell you, you know, the most popular one is probably Big Vision, Big Provision. But the one that sold the most, the one that was translated in three different languages, was Success Habits. Why? Because it has prescriptions. And I said, you know, on the front it says it has a, 11 steps. 
But before the 11 steps, there's like seven principles. In between the principles, there's like 13 different things to do. But the point is, they are all based in the word of God. They're all habits founded in the word of God. You can see every habit and see where it's attached to a promise God made in his word. And just knowing that every time that you do something, every time you take a word from God, a word that you read, a word that he spoke to, you immediately become pregnant. Pregnant with something God can produce and only God alone can produce. And how you treat that pregnancy will determine the health of what's birthed. And that's why, man, having habits, having things we do daily creates stability in our lives, but also make sure that we're having healthy pregnancies of the things God's promised us. Amen. 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 So, God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity to share with your people your word of God. Lord, God, I pray that people are all the better as a result of hearing from you today. Lord God, I pray that the word that was spoken will have a permanent residence in their hearts and they will remember that, man, it's your word and your word alone, God, that they should be standing on, living on and birthing things from for themselves. Understanding that your word has power that passes all understanding. Your your word doesn't return void, but it will do everything that it was designed to do. Understanding that, man, when you got hooked up with God, he brought you so much wisdom. He brought you so much understanding. He supplied you with so much guidance that we don't have to search the world over to find out what God's doing or designing with our lives. But, man, through his word, God will shape an everlasting rock of foundation for us to live by. And as we attend to it daily, as we, as we, as we sit out in our fields, as, as David was in his field, we will understand that our toil, our work isn't in vain. Every time we open up the book, every time we read, every time we pray, these aren't things that are done to, to just be passing time, but these are things that are, are building us up, strengthening us up for the assignment that you have for us and assignment you have prepared for us to accomplish. And if you're here today and you're saying, You know, I'm not saved. I haven't made that decision to to be a part of of God's family and army of believers. And and I want to make that decision today of making Jesus Christ my Lord and personal Savior because I want to be and have a foundation, a rock to stand on that I can live by knowing that it will never let me down. If that's you today and you would like to be saved, just say, that's me. I would love to be saved today. Amen. If you're here today, you want to rededicate your life. You want to mark this moment that your eyes of understanding came alive. Something was spoken here today that you said, you know, I'm ready, God, to run. Amen. (laughs) You want to rededicate, baby girl? (laughs) We're just saying that you want to rededicate, mark this moment that something happened, something occurred, and you're saying, God, I'm ready to, to, to walk this walk and live this, this life that you've destined for me today like never before. Just raise your hand and say, that's me. I would like to rededicate myself today. If you're here today, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You want to receive your heavenly prayer language. Just raise your hand and say, that's me. I would love to receive that gift today. Amen. If you're here today and you want to join Revealing Truth Ministries, you want to be a part of RTM Nation and all that God is having us to do to spread and give his word and the truth concerning what God has designed to do for people's lives around the world. You want to be a part of that mission with us. You want to join today. Say, that's me. I would like to join. Just wave your hand. Amen. I see it. Thank you so very much. So if you guys would turn to the person next to you, ask them the same four questions. If they say yes to either one of them, just come with them. We would love to greet them up here, up front with the love of God. Amen.